This is a message for anybody that feels as though they do not fit in, that they haven't fit in for quite a while, or maybe that they're just now realizing that the world is a much different place than it seems, and it is as mysterious as it seems. Go ahead and press the like button and comment if you support content like this and you'd like to see more of it. With that being said, going back into the topic for today and not fitting in. You ever seen those, uh, those guard dogs that are super calm and yet they're like always ready for something. They're just unnaturally calm. I've only come across like one or two of these dogs in my life where they were legit, like legit dogs that were professionally tra- trained. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Professionally trained and really just living, living well. And truly were ready for anything. But they always had this calmness to them. But you knew when you looked in its eyes that if it wanted you as a treat, oh boy, yeah, you would be the treat, man. (laughs) You would be that treat. That's the kind of attitude you need to develop in this world if you feel as though you don't fit in. You gotta realize that People are not going to like it when you don't fit into the brand that they've labeled you as. And when you grow into something different through time or when you grow into something more than they expected. It's going to play with their mind. It's going to make them wonder what you have that they don't. The truth is you you don't really have something that they don't per se, except for an understanding of who you are. A greater understanding of what you want in this world. What you would like to live in this life and how you want to live in this life. You have a purpose. And sometimes not fitting in is the most attractive thing you can do. Because when you stand out from 90% of the people. Because I know when I walk around, those are, there are like three main places that I go to out and about around my town. Gym, coffee shop, grocery store. Those are the most frequent places I visit outside of my home. And I can say with certainty that 90% of the people that I come across are just not for me. And I'm not for them. And it's nothing against them. I don't hate them. I don't wish them ill will. I don't wish anyone ill in this life. I hope everybody prospers and I hope everybody becomes empowered to live their most authentic life. To think for themselves, to be who they are. But I'll tell you what I don't want and I don't like. I don't like followers. I don't like people that follow just to follow. I like people that are a creation of leadership because leaders make leaders and followers just make more followers. And so if you're going to just follow the followers, (laughs) you're going to follow them into the pits of hell. But if a leader can create leaders, everybody becomes 
and is something more. Everybody inspires one another. Everybody inspires and empowers one another. That's a beautiful thing. That's a great thing. But a lot of people fuck it up. A lot of people fuck it up. I've always really hated the the term relationships take work. Relationships don't take work really necessarily. Relationships take time. They take dedication. They take attentiveness. They take resources. The work comes from outside the relationship sometimes, most of all. The relationship is the meaning within the work in some aspects and in many aspects. And one thing I've really understood recently, the difference between men and women in times like this, especially with like dating, if you don't fit into the dating world, the differences between men and women is that if women are or have lived in traumatic situations, it's going to decrease the sexual value. It may not decrease your value as a person, but it's going to decrease your sexual value in the marketplace, in the sexual marketplace. Whereas men, if they've gone through trauma and dealt with it, it's going to be something completely different. They come out stronger. Maybe they have more status. Maybe they have more wealth. Maybe they've accumulated a better network. Maybe they've had an accumulation of assets. Whereas the woman, when she deals with her trauma, she's still going to have that self-worth. But a lot of time has passed. Usually. And men's sexual marketplace value doesn't really hit its stride until late 20s into late 30s. Whereas women's sexual market value is at its highest between 18 to 24. That's just the truth. That's just the matter of the situation. I'm not saying there aren't women that are not attractive at the age of 30, 35, even 55. Because you can be a very beautiful woman and if you sustain your health and your fitness and your livelihood, you can be beautiful for a long time. But you're simply not going to compete with the sexual market of 18 to 24 year old women. It's just not going to happen. And if you don't like to hear that, I don't know what to say. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm not trying to tell you that there's no hope. I'm not trying to tell you that there's no way of going around it, but you're not going to be able to fit in. And sometimes that's okay to just not fit into the, the standards in society. Because wouldn't you rather have your own sense of personal worth more than any kind of beauty? But it is nice to get both sides. Yes, absolutely. And in one of my videos, I want to clarify something that I did recently. In one of my videos, I said that the women that I've been attracting more in the last two months than the last one or two years combined, and that's a pain. The reason that it's a pain is because I don't like letting people down. I don't like letting people... I don't like seeing people suffer. I don't mind having to set boundaries, of course, and I don't mind having to, you know, say this is what I want, this is what I don't want. I'm not going to accept or tolerate this kind of behavior. And if you're going to participate in that, that's fine. That's your prerogative. But I'm not going to let you into my life if that's the case. And if we don't have an agreement on that, then I'm out. I don't have a problem with that. 
what I have a problem with is I don't like talking to too many women at one time. It's just a lot of work. And I don't like having to, <clears throat> I guess I don't like having to like pass up opportunities that could be great when I already have something kind of in the works. Because I'm not really looking for flings right now. It's just not my style. I did that in the past. It was fun while it lasted, but I paid for it. And I learned my lessons hard. Hard lessons. And I'm not saying you can't have sex, or I'm not saying you can't do those kind of sexual activities or anything like that. I'm not here to say that. I'm just saying that the reason that it's kind of a pain is just because I don't like I don't like f making people feel like they are not worthy of care or they're not worthy of being provided or protected for until they show behaviors that clearly indicate that they're not. That's when I don't have a freaking problem at all. <laughs> but but if she seems like a nice gal and she seems pretty sweet and fit and feminine, then it's like, yeah, I, I don't I, like I wish you well. I respect you. I'm gonna have to keep going. I'm gonna have to keep going my way. Because I don't like starting things that I don't finish. And I don't like taking on more than I'm capable of. I don't like biting off more than I can chew. I like to definitely, you know, go above and beyond as much as I can. But I know my own time limits. I have other commitments to make. I have a purpose in my life. I'm trying to make things happen. I'm trying to make shit happen. I can't be wasting all my time with multiple women all the time. It's exhausting. But it is nice. To have that kind of uh, impact Because I had, I never experienced that, really, up until the last year or two. Specifically in the last two or three months. But in the last year or two, I've never really experienced that. Because I was a simp. I was a... I was that person that would bend over backwards or frontwards to be with a woman and in hindsight all that it really got me was wasted time and especially in the dating market right now if you don't feel like you fit in in this time period that's okay man that's okay Sometimes, like I said, it's sometimes more attractive to not fit in. Because then you know that when you find somebody else that doesn't really fit in, you know that they can think for themselves and that they're capable of independent thought and authenticity. That's what 90% of the people are lacking where I'm, where I'm going and where I, from what I can see. So I don't really feel bad, per se. It's just kind of annoying to have this repetition. It's funny. You're always going to have ways to look at things. The person that I was five years ago would have 
done anything he can. He would have done anything he could and can to get the kind of attention I'm getting now. And now that I have that attention, granted I have different priorities, I look at it a totally different way. So it's really a good thing that I didn't get that kind of attention when I was younger because I probably would have taken too much advantage of it and I probably would have had even more to repent for. But now that I have discipline, I have control, I have a sense of understanding of my own emotions to a deep core of who I am, it's a lot easier to not chase things because you don't have to chase it anymore. It's pretty cool. It's pretty great. And I think any person can get there to that point, specifically men. I'm talking to the men specifically now. Keep working on yourself. Keep working on self-improvement. The women will come. They will. I didn't believe it two or three years ago. I didn't believe it. And about a year, two and a half, about a year, two years ago when I really started to just, I didn't give up on dating. I just stopped in trying to interact with women all the time just for the sake of interacting with women to just get something, I guess you could say. And now it's, I'm, I'm to the point where I don't need to get that thing. And so men out there, when you get to a self-improvement level high enough where you don't need that, that's the most amazing freeing thing ever. Because now you know that no matter what happens, you are not a thirsty, feminized man trying to just get into someone's pants. That's really the way that that's the best way to say it. Sorry to be so direct on that, ladies and gentlemen, but it is what it is. <clears throat> so men Now, use your trauma to build. Women, use your trauma to understand what not to do. That's when you'll understand how to not fit in or understand how, to, how not fitting in is actually a blessing. Not fitting in is going to be one of the best things to you and for you. You'll be able to see reality as clear as day. You'll be calm. You'll have the eyesight to take on challenges as they come without fear. You'll be able to look into the face of adversity with a smile and that's a damn good feeling so when you don't fit in you're probably on the right track with that being said I hope this message was useful and informative until next time see ya